Hola, I am Tony Galvez from Road Trip Spain and Portugal, where we help you plan the perfect trip with practical information and insider tips. Today we are traveling to Cordoba to visit one of the great treasures of ancient Al-Andalus, the magnificent Medina Azahara, the shining city. In the video we dedicated to Cordoba, we mentioned that those who had enough time to spare in the city could add a visit that we find very interesting, the archaeological site of Medina Azahara, a place so valuable that in 2018 UNESCO included it in the list of World Heritage Sites. The reasons that led UNESCO to take this decision were twofold. On the one hand, Medina Zara is an exceptional witness to the Umayyad, or media in Spanish, civilization and the development of Al-Andalus, the name by which the Iberian Peninsula was known when it was inhabited by Muslims. On the other hand, the Palatine city is an extraordinary example of urban planning and the adaptation of architecture to the terrain. To make everything easy to understand, in today's video we are going to tell you where Medina Zara is, what it is, how it is structured, how to get there, how to visit it, and finally we are going to share some practical tips. Medina Zara is in the interior of Andalusia, in the southern half of Spain. The archaeological site is located 8 kilometers from the city of Córdoba and is therefore very close to the city. Medina Zara, or Madinat al Zara, which is also widely used as a transcription of the Arabic word, was a palatine city that the first caliph of Córdoba, Abderrahman III, ordered to be built near the city. Until that time, the center of political power had been in the Alcázar of Córdoba, but Abderrahman wanted to found a new city that would be an expression of his political power. Construction began in 936 and the city was short-lived. Eighty years later, with the fall of the Caliphate of Córdoba, the city was razed to the ground and destroyed. The looting of the ruins continued for centuries and today you can see in the streets of Córdoba this is from Medina Zahara and from older civilizations as well. The ruins were only rediscovered in the 19th century and archaeological excavations began in 1911 and continue to this day. From time to time new finds come to light, such as the mosque found in 2007. It's mind-boggling to discover, as you will, in a model in the museum of Medina Zahara that the part of the city excavated to date represents only 10% of the original extent of the city. One of the current priorities of the team of archaeologists working at the site is to try to establish the precise limits of the gigantic ancient city. The Medina Zara site visited today is very extensive and consists of two different parts. On the one hand, there is the visitor center and the museum, and on the other, the archaeological site itself. The distance between the two is long and can only be covered riding a special shuttle bus, which we will talk about later. This bus is a paid service. The round trip costs 250 at the moment. The visitor center and the museum are integrated in a very modern multi-story building discreetly hidden underground. As we have just mentioned, the site is quite far away. In the picture you see now, recorded inside the museum, you can see part of the site in the background on the left. The idea of building the museum at the visitor center in a remote location allowed the archaeological site to remain intact. The site is just that, a large group of ruins in a greater or lesser state of preservation where archaeologists continue to work to this day. How to get to Medina Zara? You have two basic alternatives. You can arrive in a private vehicle, either your own, a rented car or a taxi, in the latter case it will cost you about 10 euros. It will take you less than 15 minutes from the center of Córdoba and you will find free parking at the visitor center. Or you can take a special bus. Let's take a look at the details of this bus service. It is a yellow bus with the letters Bus Madinat Afara written on the sides and with the identification on the front as well. The initial stop on the route is near the Puerta de Almodóvar, the entrance to the Jewish quarter of Córdoba, in the small square in front of the modern Eurostars Hotel. There is a second stop on the avenue in front of the Victoria Market. When there are many passengers, in addition to the yellow bus, a second bus can be used. 
which can be of a different color but with the ID on the front. The bus at the time of recording this video is priced at 9 euros, with a small discount if you buy the ticket online and a reduced price for children. You can buy the tickets either at the tourist offices in Cordoba or on the bus website, which we are going to put in the description of the video. The ticket includes the return trip to the visitor center of Medina Zahara and the return trip on the shuttle bus from the visitor center to the site. Important, in order to use the second bus, you have to present a voucher with a barcode that will be sent to you by email when the purchase is confirmed, if you buy the tickets online. Now pay attention to the timetables because the bus has only three outbound services and three return times per day. You will now see at the bottom of the screen the schedules valid right now when we are recording the video, but the schedules that matter are the ones that the system will show you when you go to buy the tickets for the date of your visit. It is important to know the times because when you buy the ticket, you have to define the departure and return times. If you log into the reservation system, you can see how many seats are available for each timetable. Don't leave the purchase of your bus ticket to the last minute if you want to get to Medina Zahara by bus. Let's move on to the most interesting part of the video, the visit itself. Regardless of how you get to the visitor center, the first thing you will have to do is go inside and collect your ticket and buy a ticket for the shuttle bus that takes you to the site. Let's quickly talk about tickets. For citizens of the European Union, entrance to the archaeological site is free of charge. For citizens from anywhere else in the world, it costs 150 at the time of recording this video. Everyone, regardless of their country of origin, has to pay for the shuttle bus to the site. In the description of the video, we're going to put a link so that you can check the updated prices and, very importantly, the timetables. The site is not usually open on Mondays. With your tickets in hand, you will go outside the visitor center and wait for the bus that takes you to the site. It is a green bus and runs at regular intervals. When we visited Medina Zara, we found the organization of the shuttle bus chaotic. It ran very infrequently and we had to crowd into the bus like sardines in a can. We hope it has improved. In less than 10 minutes, you arrive at the site where the visit begins. There is a pre-established itinerary for the visit, which only covers part of the site. You are zigzagging all the time, sometimes through a real maze of archaeological remains. The tour starts at a high point from where you have a general view of the city and then it goes down to the lower parts of the city. On the way back, you have to climb back up to the entrance. If you do the tour on your own, you will see arrows along the way indicating the direction to follow as well as information plaques at the most important points. If you take a guided tour, just follow the guide. You should allow between one and two hours for a complete tour of the site. At the end of the tour, you will find yourself back at the starting point where you will catch the bus, the shuttle bus that will take you back to the visitor center. By the way, make the most of it, there are toilets at the visitor center. There are two main activities at the visitor center. There is a room where a video about Medina Zahara is shown and there is the museum. Our advice, if you are short of time, skip the video and concentrate on the museum. In the final block of tips in this video, we will explain you why. The museum is not very big, but there are several precious objects from the site, as well as many panels with explanations that will help you understand better the importance of Medina Zahara. At 
there are even some large windows that allows us to see inside the storage rooms of the site and to contemplate the incredible amount of material waiting we imagine to be classified. Once you've finished visiting the museum, it's time to return to Cordoba by your chosen means of transportation. To finish the video, we're going to share our tips about Medina Azahara. The first and most important tip is to try to adjust your expectations to the reality of Medina Azahara. You are going to visit an archaeological site and not a finished monument such as the Mosque of Cordoba or the Alhambra in Granada. In fact, the archaeological work carried out in Medina Azahara does not aim to reconstruct the city so that one day you can walk around as you can do today in the Alhambra. For instance, if you know you are going to visit ruins, your expectations are going to match the reality of Medina Zara. To be honest, when we visited the site, we didn't think it would be such an interesting visit and we ended up loving the place, both the site and the museum. The second tip is closely related to the previous one. If there is one place in Spain where we would not recommend you to visit on your own, it is Medina Zara. Unless you are a specialist in archaeology, the stones will tell you very little. And since they won't tell you much, your visit is likely to end up being a frustration. We have already talked about the information plaques, but the content available to you is rather limited. So take our advice and book a guided tour. The Shining City will live up to its nickname. It will be money well spent. In the description of the video, we will put links so that you can check the price of the guided tours. You can hire just the guided tour, which is a good idea if you go by car to Medina Zara, or you can do as we did, a package that includes the transport in the yellow bus, the internal bus, the shuttle bus in the complex, and the guide. It was a very positive experience. We had an excellent guide, and by hiring everything in one package, the visit was much easier. We did not have to worry about buying the transport to Medina Zara, collecting the entrance ticket, or buying the ticket for the shuttle bus. Choose whichever way you prefer, but trust us. Take a guided tour if you want to get the most out of the experience. Tip number three. When we mentioned the visitor center, we talked about two things you could do, apart from going to the toilet and visiting the shop. The museum and the video screening. And we told you to skip the video. And it's not because the video is bad. Far from it, on the contrary. It is fantastic, very well done, as you must be seeing now on the screen. We advise you to skip the video in Medina Zara because we think you should watch it before arriving in Cordoba. You can watch it in the comfort of your own home. In fact, even if you're not planning to visit Medina Zara, you can watch the video to marvel at the Palatine city. We will put a link to the video, you can imagine, in the description of this video. The fourth tip is to avoid Medina Zara in July and August. In fact, you should avoid the interior of Andalusia at all costs during these months, as we never tire of warning. A heat wave in Cordoba or Seville is not for everyone, and a visit to Medina Zara where there are almost no trees and many parts of the site are stone slabs where you could fry an egg is for masochists. Related to this tip, and for a visit at any time of the year, take water. There is no cafe or vending machines in the visitor center. Tip 5. If you have any mobility problems, you should be aware that you will be going down and then up for part of the visit. You will need to climb stairs and most of the time you will walk on an even floor. Visit Medina Zara may not be a good idea for those who are unable to walk very far. Tip 6. If you have arrived in Medina Zara by bus, be careful not to miss the return bus which leaves on time at a scheduled time. And our final tip, if you are interested in history and art, there is a beautiful place in Cordoba which we didn't mention in the video about the city because we already included too many attractions for a short stay in Cordoba. It is the Museo Arqueológico de Cordoba, the Archaeological Museum of Cordoba, which is in the center not far from the mosque. It's a very interesting visit and inside the museum you will find several precious things from Medina Azar. Admission to the museum is free for European Union citizens, 150 for citizens of any other country. And with this tip we end today's video. You already know that we are members of the Cordoba Fan Club. I would say even more, Cordoba is one of our great Spanish passions. 
it's a place you shouldn't miss. If you have any doubts about Medina Zahara, take the opportunity to ask. You will see now on the screen the video in which we project all our love from Córdoba, with lots of tips and information about what you can't miss in the city and with an essential section about local food. Don't miss it. Hasta la próxima. See you soon.